and welcome to our video tutorial for this bandana that you can see Melba modeling here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this bandana, you will choose your yarn and this bandana would suit summer or winter weight yarns, probably yarns that are down on the finer end of the weight spectrum. I've got this one weight cotton polyester that works out beautifully into this particular pattern but you know like I said you could do it as a winter weight yarn I love this cotton polyester because it's it washes really really well and with Melba wearing it I need to you know wash it quite often so yeah choose your yarn and unless you're making this for a larger animal then you know a finer weight yarn is probably where you want to sit and then you'll choose your crochet hook and I've got a 2.5 millimeter for my work today. You'll need a pair of scissors, a sewing or darning needle. Now I've got this two in one. It's large enough to fit my yarn through the eye, but also it's nice and sharp and it will fit through my buttonholes. Okay. So, you know, you can have a darning needle plus a sewing needle, whatever, you know, whatever you've got in hand. I've got one that will do both of those jobs for me. And actually, we'll talk about, you can, you know, if you've got a button that's about one to one and a half centimeters, it will be ideal. But you've also got the option to make this bandana as a tie up. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. And just to bring in my other one so this one I'm going to show, demonstrate it as a button up but I'll talk about how you can turn it into a tie up and the pattern in the stitches is just our natural buttonhole so the button can be adjusted to wherever you you know need it to be according to the size of your cat's neck so you have a tape measure on hand to measure your cat's neck circumference but if you've only got a ballpark you can you know make this adjustable okay so you don't need an accurate measurement for your cat's neck circumference. And as always, in the description box below, I'll uh, include a guide to standard cat sizes, and you can work from that. And, um, you know, otherwise, it's always a good idea to have a, you know, a, a, a rough, rough idea of where your cat sits as far as neck circumference. You know, plus or minus a centimetre is you know, a good thing to know. So yeah, I think that's all for now. So let's move on to the techniques and stitches you'll need to know. Okay, so here are the two bandanas. So this one I'm filming today, this one is um, one I've made, pre made previously. Now the difference between the two is that this one I've added extra, oh, extra areas of these little star patterns, okay? So I've got a star pattern there, I've got one on each, on each side. Now, this one, like I said, is the one that I'm filming today. I'm just adding one star pattern on this one that I'm filming today for a couple of reasons. It's easier um, to film or it's, you know, just streamlines the filming. It's uh, more beginner friendly if we just leave it with this one star pattern. And the other thing is, is that when when you your cat wears it and if it's you know you're making it for a cat most likely you'll fold over that neck area and it covers those it covers those stars anyway to a you know you know to quite a great degree it covers at least half of them so it's entirely up to you if you add extra star patterns like this one actually let's just open that up so it's a little bit easier to see so like this one here I've added those extra star patterns. And what it does is it makes the fit a little bit looser around the neck as well. So just uh, bear that in mind. But, you know, I'm going to leave, if you've got some experience with crocheting, I'm going to leave it up to you to work out if you want to add those extra, that extra layer of star detail. Okay? You just, you'll just have to work out where you want to place it, where you'll start building the star but it you know it's just exactly the same as this one and then you can add them in other areas too but just like i said for ease and just to make it more bit more beginner friendly we're just going to do this one today that has just the one star in it so when that edge is folded over anyway you know they kind of look the same when the cat's wearing them okay so to make this uh, bandana you'll need to know how to make a slip knot on your hook and we'll start down at the base here 
We'll make a slip knot. We'll make a chain. We'll make double crochet. So all of this work here is just double crochet four sets, four in sets of four. Um, at the end of each row, there'll be a triple crochet. And this star area is just chain and single crochet. Okay, so you know all of these are beginner friendly. I think it's a great beginner project if you've you know you're familiar with those basic techniques and you want to you know make one of your first projects. Then this is this is a great one, you know. And then from there the techniques of sewing on a button and uh, you know weaving in your ends. And that that's pretty much it. But you get this really cute and pretty bandana at the end. Now you as I've said you've got the option of making it button up or tie up okay and then um, you know it, it's easy to adjust you'll just extend the width a little bit more so you've got enough to tie it up okay so yeah that's pretty much it as far as techniques go so let's get started with the tutorial Okay, so to get started, you'll make a slip knot onto your hook. And then you're going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then to create a little loop that we're going to start our work into, you'll just slip stitch into that very first chain. So the chain the furthest from the hook, just slip stitch into there. And that creates this little loop, little circle that we're going to work into. Okay, so starting off with our row one, you'll chain eight, three, four, oops, five, six, Seven and eight and turn your work now we're going to place four double crochets into that little circle so just a reminder I use yours terminology so a double crochet yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and two more times so for this first row, four double crochets into the circle. And then we're going to chain two. And then a triple crochet into the center of the circle. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's a triple crochet. And that completes our row one. Okay, so you've got something that looks like this. So moving on to row two, you'll chain eight. So that each row will start like this. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And turn. And then into, for this row two, once again, we're doing four double crochets into that first chain two space from the previous row one and two three and four so you've got your row looking like this so far you're going to chain two and then into this chain eight, we go, which what the tra chain eight at the beginning of each row is the equivalent of a triple crochet in a chain two. Okay, so into that space we're going to put our four double crochets again. One, two, three, and four. And then you're going to chain two. So each row will end the same way with the chain two and then the triple crochet into that same chain space. Okay, and that finishes up row two. So you've got something that looks like this. 
Okay, so moving on to row three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And turn. And then your four double crochets into that chain two space from the previous row. Two, three, and four. Chain two. Move to your next chain two space and do the same thing. Four double crochets in that next chain two space. Three and four. And I think you can probably see how this is going to end. Chain two, four double crochets in that chain eight space from the previous row. One, two, three, and four. And then chain two and your triple crochet as the last stitch in your third row. Oops, let's start that one again. Triple crochet to end out that third row. Okay, so that's the basic pattern for this bandana. Now, if you wanted to, you could make this whole bandana just in this simple pattern. But the, the pattern today is to add this little, this little star in there, okay? So we're going to do that, add, start adding that from row four. Just, I'm just going to repeat what I've done in this, this bandana. Now you can go for a few more rows before you start your, your pattern if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you where you choose to put it. So what you probably want to do though is probably do it on an odd row so you can put it right at the center, okay, directly above, right, you know, right at the center. So I'm putting it into... Uh, well, actually, you'll put it into an even row, but it will be directly above an odd row. Okay, so this is one, two, three. So then I can put it directly above this center little cluster of, of four double crochets. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so you could go for another row, four, five, and then put it in your sixth row as well. Okay, so then you'll put it above the center cluster in the fifth row. Okay, so let's uh, let's start to add our uh, little little star pattern in this next row. Okay, so starting off row four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and turn, and you'll place your four double crochets into that first chain space, one and two, three and four. And then into the next chain space and we'll firstly chain two to get there and then next chain space we'll do the same. So our four double crochets three and four. Now, so we're going to start the star pattern in this row. So we're going to make a chain in between these next two, sorry, can you see that? Next two clusters of four. So we're going to start creating our star here. So we're going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to go over to the next chain space and start our double crochet there. So our four double crochet after we've chained eight to start off our star pattern. One, two, three, and three, four. 
And then we'll finish out this row in the same way as the other rows, chaining two, four double crochets in that chain eight space. One and two, three and four, chain two, and triple crochet to finish out the row. Oops. Once again, I need a bit more yarn. Okay, there we go. Triple crochet into that last chain space. Okay, so we've started our little star pattern. So hopefully what I said before was clear. So you want to start your star pattern above a row with an odd number of clusters. So you, you're making it an, an even row, okay, an even numbered row. So one, two, three, four. I've started it in row four. So then I can make it right in the center above the central. Um, so say there was five, you make it above the third one, okay? So you want an odd number that you can start it above. So it's nice and central in your bandana pattern. Okay, so moving on to the next row, chain your eight, five, six, seven, and eight, turn, and your four double crochets, two, three, and four, chain two, and four double crochets. Three and four. So if you're doing it in a different row, say you're doing it in the sixth row, you would um, continue on until you get to, to that where your star is. You're going to chain six. Four five and six and then you're going to single crochet into that chain eight space from the previous from the previous row so single crochet in there now pull that nice and tight and get it in the center as best you can and then chain six one two three four five and six and then you'll move along to your next chain space and do your four double crochets. Your four double crochets, chain two, four double crochets, chain two and triple crochet to finish out this row four. So I'm gonna leave you to do that. I'll work my the end of my row off camera. So you'll just finish out the row as you did for the previous um, previous rows and I'll see you at the end of row actually this is the end of row five at the end of my row five okay so your bandana is looking like this so we're going to move on to the next row row six for me two three four five six seven Eight. So we're just going to start this row exactly as we've done for the previous row. So work your, your, you've got your chain of eight, your four double crochets in this next chain space, or the first chain space, chain two, and then work your four double crochets in the next chain space. And then I'll meet you after I've done this, this, uh, this one here, okay? So and then we'll work the next part of the star together. Okay, so I'm at my little star. So now we're going to chain seven. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to place a, so we're going to place three single crochets in this row. Okay, so the first single crochet will go next to the previous single crochet. So in the chain space, the chain uh, what was it? A chain six space from the previous row. So in that chain six space, you'll do your first single crochet, but you'll put it right, just move it if you need to, right up against the single crochet from the previous row. 
and then you'll place your next single crochet in the single crochet from the previous row and then your third single crochet in this row will go again right next to the single crochet in the chain six space okay so you've got it looking like this so you've got three single crochets here okay then you'll chain your seven four five six and seven which is just a mirror of the chain seven we did at the other side and then you'll finish out the row as before you'll move across to your next chain space one two and do your four double crochets chain two and then finish out this row with your four double crochets chain two and triple crochet so i'll see you at the end of the row okay so here i am at the end of my row so we're going to move on to what for me is row seven might be a different row for you but you're going to chain your eight start your row as before and eight and you'll start your row just as you've done in the previous rows you'll do your four double crochets in the first chain space chain two four double crochets and i'll meet you and we'll complete the next part of the star together Okay, so this time for our star, we're going to chain eight. One, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we're going to work five single crochets across the star this time. So the first one will go in the chain seven space from the previous row, right up against that first single crochet. So, you know, you can do it somewhere along the chain and then just move it along to the end of the chain and then your next single crochet in that first single crochet from the previous row and then oops let's get my hook back in there and then in the next single crochet so one in each of the three single crochets from the previous row and then your fifth single crochet will go into the chain space okay right up against that last single crochet and then you'll chain your eight four five six seven and eight and then you'll finish out this row exactly as before so i'll see you at the end of the row Okay, so I'm starting off row eight here. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which it's row eight for me. It might not be row eight for you. So I'm going to once again start off my row and we'll meet and we'll continue on with the star together. Okay, so I've started off my row. Now this row is just slightly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain two here. And we're actually going to put a little cluster of four double crochets at this end of the chain from the previous row. So in here, do four double crochets. Two. Oops. Two. Three. And four. So move it right up against... So right up at the end of that, yes, if you need to just shimmy them along a little bit, move it up right against the end of that chain, okay? And then you're going to chain seven, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to work into the, just the center three single crochets. So you'll skip the first single crochet and work into the next. So single crochet into the next. And then into the next two stitches so one single crochet and one single crochet so we'll skip the last single crochet and chain our seven again two three four five six and seven and then working as we did at the beginning of the row so just mirror the beginning of the row you'll work your four double crochets up against the end of the chain from the previous row. So one, two, oops, I'm getting a little bit of split down here. Two, three, and four. 
Now just move move those along to the end of the chain. Oops, just undone my last one. And then you'll just finish out the row as, as before. So you go ahead and do that. There, I've put my last one in there. Move it up against the end and then ch ch chain two and then work your last two chain spaces. Okay, finish out the row just as you've done for the previous rows. So I'll see you at the end of this row. Okay, so moving on to the next row, you'll just start the next row as before. So you'll be, you've got, after you've chained your eight, three, four, I'll finish that off, off camera. But once you've chained your eight, you'll work into the first chain space, the second chain space, and the third chain space. And I'll meet you there. So your four double crochets in each of those chain spaces. And I'll meet you there and we'll continue on with this star. Okay, so once again we're going to chain two and work our four double crochets into that chain space from the previous row. So the, the, this is working into the seven chain space. So that's one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to chain six, three, four, five and six and working one single crochet this time so skipping the first and just working into the second single crochet so a single crochet in that center single crochet chain six three four five and six and then your four double crochets into the chain on the other side just as you did at the beginning of this the the star in this row so two three and four and then just pushing that up against the end of the chain if you need to chain two and then finish out your row as before. So you've got three chain spaces at the end of this row, just as you did at the beginning. So continue on and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so that's the end of my row and I'm just gonna start out this, the next row just as before. So you'll work your double crochets in each of your chain spaces, which will be, it'll be of course again, once again this way. So you'll work your double crochets in each of your chain spaces and then I'll meet you and we'll finish off the star. So this is the last row for completing the star. So I'll meet you once we get to here. Okay so I've started my row there. I've worked up to my chain space, my six chain space from the previous row. I'm going to chain two and we're going to work Right up against the edge of that chain again, we're going to work our four double crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we're just going to chain two and then work straight over on the other chain. Oops, double crochet, our four double crochets on the other side of the six chain space. So the other six chain space from the previous row. So that's two, three, and four. Okay, so that completes our star pattern. And now we're just going to finish out this row and then just continue with that same row working our chain eight, our uh, double crochet little clusters in each of the chain space and then we're just going to keep going until the, you reach the size that you need okay so yeah so it's it's pretty much that simple so the rest of the bandana unless you're adding you know extra areas of star pattern which you of course can if you want to unless you're adding extra areas of star pattern you'll just continue on with this same they're exactly the same, those, those blocks of four double crochets, chain two, and then your, your triple crochet at the end. Okay, and then your chain eight, and then you keep, you keep going. And you just keep going until you've got, you know, the, the width that you need to be able to, you know, add your button 
and for it to fit the neck circumference of your cat. And depending on, you know, how loosey you want it to sit around the neck and, you know, you'll just keep on working. So I'm going to let you go ahead now and work on your own. So just keep working until you've got the size that you need. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Okay, so you can see that I've worked along a bit there. And uh, I'm actually really loving it with only just one star. I think it just, it highlights the star. And, you know, you can see here... It, the stars are a little bit less highlighted for me. I, it just makes this one really stand out. So I, I actually really like it just with the one star. But, um, you know, with two stars, it's good too. And what also having those extra stars, it just loosens it around the neck a little bit. So, you know, you might want that. Just so it sits a little bit looser under the neck. This one's not quite as loose under the neck. But, you know, it's still fine. It's still going to fit absolutely fine. So just to work out where I'm at with sizing, and you'll keep an eye on your sizing as well, let's say I'm going to add my button on. So you just want to attach it to one of the, one of the little, um, you know, clusters of four. So it'll be about there to fit my button. And also, you know, obviously you, you want your button to be able to fit through one of the holes, natural holes in your work. So let's say I add it there. Let's just turn this around. So yeah, using the very furthest buttonhole, which is this little end hole here, I'm at 23. So Melba's neck circumference is 24. So I need to go just a little bit more. Like, yeah. Within two to three rows, I think I'm going to be looking pretty good because I'm doing button up. And you'll just keep going if you want to make it a tie up. You know, you'll, you'll keep going until you've got enough width to be able to tie just a little, a little simple knot. So, um, yeah, I'm going to keep going for a few more rows and uh, you keep an eye on your sizing and uh, I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've added a couple of extra rows on there. Let's see where I'm at with my sizing. Yeah, I'm good now. So from where I would place my button, which would be there, all the way to, yeah, this button hole. That's going to be this one here. That's going to be pretty much perfect. And then I've still got these other ones here if I need to extend it. So, yeah, I think that's going to be fine for me. So now you'll just, from here, you can just finish off. So yarn over and pull through. Now, leave a bit of a tail because you're going to use your tail to sew on your button. Okay? That's if you're, button, you, you know, doing a button up, of course. So just leave a little bit extra so you can... Sew on your button, and just snip off your end. And of course, all you've got to do, it's a nice and simple one to finish off this one. You've just got to sew on your button and weave in your other tail end down at the bottom here. So let's, you know, I'm going to assume that you know how to do this, but let's let's just show you how I finish this off. So You'll just need to work your work your tail end in and through to where you want your your button to go. Okay, so just just work your way down and you know you might want to just shape that end a little bit. So I want my button to sit on this little set of of three, so I'm going to just work work my tail down there. So, you know, it, it's a good idea to have a slightly sharper needle than, than you usually would use for just weaving in your ends. Just makes it a little bit easier for sewing. So I'm going to come up through my button and just sew on my button very simply there. So just, you know, you want to pull this tight but just don't misshape your work with your, with your tail. So this is where it's going to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off with sewing on my button. I've only got two holes in my little my little button. So I'm just going to sew that on 
just in a really simple way. And then, of course, I will weave in the remainder of my tail end just to disguise it. And then, um, you know, I'll just do the, the, the beginning tail end. And this one you might just want to shape a little bit because it's sort of sitting on the side. So you'll just want to shape your, that, you know, that area a little bit, most likely. And, you know, as I often say, your tail end, you know, you want to hide it. But it's also a good opportunity just to do a little bit of hand sewing and shaping your work, tidying up your work, you know, whatever needs to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off camera. So I'll finish sewing on my button once I can thread that through. I'll sew, finish sewing on my button and I'll weave in this tail end while doing just a little bit of shaping. Make sure that bottom edge is, is uh, really, you know, uniform and nicely shaped. And I'll see you soon and we'll, we'll just uh, finish off together. Okay, I just want to show you also quickly the little knot that I do just to secure my button. You, you know, you just want any buttons that you add onto your work for a cat you want to make sure that it's well secured so all I do is I just thread my yarn through the loop little loop so I just insert my yarn just anywhere so I've sewn on my button I just insert my yarn and then I insert my hook through that loop that so it just makes a little a little knot just a classic sort of sewing knot okay and that makes the button even more secure just you don't want any choking hazard and then I'll just weave in that end so yeah I'll go ahead and finish that off and I'll see you in a moment okay so I'm just finishing off at the bottom tail end there and I've got that looking nice and neat just snip off that excess and there is my finished bandana And I think that's really cute. I love it. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's um, you know a great one if you're a beginner and you just want to try out making a bandana for your cat. Actually, let's. I might just move that button to. Maybe I'm going to end up putting it in the end one there. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I think it's a it's a great one. It's a great one if your cat goes out on leash and you want a nice bright coloured bandana. It uh, adds to safety, you know, if you've got a nice bright coloured bandana, if they ever escape from leash, you've got something bright on them that you can, you know, easily see. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, but it can be for cats that don't go out on leash as well. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I, I think it's just really fun. I really enjoy making this one up. And I think it looks really cute. And I love this green on Melba. It just really suits her beautifully. So as always, I would love to see your photos, see how you've created the colours that you've used. I always love to meet your cat and, uh, you know, it inspires me to keep going and keep making um, patterns and tutorials for you. So please, you know, drop us a line, send us some photos and you can do that to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So thanks very much for being here and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. What does that look, Melba? You weirdo. Want to go? Hang on one more. Ready? Should we just do one more? Look. Ready? Hang on. Hang on. Thanks. <laughs> She's going.